Hmm, cruising YouTube. Wait, what was that? Install Chrome OS on your laptop PC access. Oh, really? This gives me an idea. Hello there, I'm Tech Dave, and today we are beginning what will be an ongoing series of videos called Tech Dave Snippets. And the idea is that I do a lot of random things with tech, most of which aren't quite enough information or detail or long-winded enough to ver like qualify to actually make a video. And I decided I should probably capture some of those things and make them into a kind of a mini-series or an ongoing sort of playlist of videos. And Today I'm actually looking at Chrome OS, but on the X230 tablet. It's absolutely perfect for this device. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's go into the video and show you what it's all about. So for the more astute of you, you may see that I already have Chrome OS installed on the laptop. The touchscreen works perfectly, the stylus works perfectly. Every aspect, including the mobile broadband, works perfectly out of the box with the install but I thought I'd reference here I'll probably include it in the link in the description or the first comment probably in description but this is the second video I watched I tried it first on the X200 which failed for some reason to do with the CPU and the generation of it where Chrome OS wasn't um, compatible but yeah if you know you can you can see here we've got ETA Prime who is a legend for stuff like this just if you don't watch him you should subscribe like to his channel as well as mine you know but um yeah he just does some interesting experiments and you can see over here on the right there's the way to triple boot it or install it alongside uh say linux or windows 10 and this guy kadar nimbalka was who he was referencing and also who the video i saw first but his eta primes is just much more concise and detailed but he, he clearly references the fact that uh he got it from kadar so I would say maybe check out this video on screen that's on screen all around me and uh, maybe go to Kadar's if there's any issues you're having as well. So I've actually got it all installed on this laptop. Um, the interface is amazing. I don't know if you can see in the corner here, obviously. Uh, but yeah, I've got a like, load of apps installed and it's just, oh, it's just so intuitive. I don't know if it'll do it now because I've got the screen plugged in, but you can also... Uh, when I was playing with it unplugged it kind of there you go you can see it's moved into a slightly different like touch mode um, that is kind of just permanently on when you flip the screen I have no idea why that does that there must be a similar uh, hardware related thing that the ThinkPad has the ThinkPad X230 has that that Chrome OS it signals that that needs to happen. I don't know whether they've cheekily included like it working. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, I, I'm just like it's so cool. What basically basically what I did, I put a 64 gig SSD uh, alternate SSD in my laptop, and then um, the video which I will link in the description and I was just referencing will detail exactly how to install it. So I'm just going to just keep this video nice and short and just sort of show you how it functions and why I'm so enamoured with this. So first off, I just wanted to show you this working. So you can see in the bottom left, left corner, I've got my stylus and uh, you touch for the actual interface and then hi YouTube. It tracks perfectly. It's wonderful. I really like it. And you've got all your different pens. This is just Google Canvas. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and it's just it's it's because it's it's only a two hundred megabyte install, I believe, and it leaves you with the entirety of your system your system drive available. And it's just it's just so well optimized. For what it is and then the other thing that is incredibly cool if i just go to a browser that i've been messing around with quite a lot lately anyway is geforce now is compatible with chromebooks i'm just going to pause it and log in but yeah it runs one sec 
So you go to nvidia.com, the GeForce Now, and you go to the download link, and then you launch. It may ask me to log in. If so, I will do record this section again. But yeah, you just launch it. It's logged me in, sweet. And yeah, like here we go. I'm just gonna mute it just in case you hit the audio. But as you can see, Chromebook is completely compatible and usable with GeForce Now which is a major selling point for me because it's kind of one of the things I wanted to try <coughs> when <coughs> when I heard about Chromebook because it's a very lightweight OS and I was, so I was originally going to install it on the X230 the X200 sorry but it wasn't compatible with that CPU but yeah that's there's two little features there that I really like you can drop out and quick game, let's just see it running briefly. And we're back in, look, and we're into Destiny. Completely playable on an X230 tablet via GeForce Now. You're seeing it slightly behind what I'm seeing it, but yeah, it it runs perfectly. And I was extremely pleased about that. So you still have to log in, but like it's just such a bonus. And then the other thing that works out of the box, let's just quit out of there. Not let me quit on F11. Quit game. On save progress. Yes, don't worry about that. The other thing that works out of the box, which I was enormously pleased about, is if you go to network, uh, mobile data. So my mobile data works straight away on the device, and that's enormously pleasing to me essentially so I had to cut that and edit it a little bit but the basic point is that my mobile broadband worked straight away with the device automatically uh, I can link it to your messages because I've got a Sony phone which has got the ability to come so I can have all my messages come up uh, you've got YouTube music, I've got all my apps uh, Among Us didn't work and I don't know why but Discord does, does work and yeah, that's kind of all I wanted to say is just just to discuss how bloody convenient it is um, to have this option, and it performs perfectly well. The battery life seems to be uh, basically identical to Windows, but just a little bit slower, as uh, a bit shorter, as it doesn't seem to have a battery saving mode that I can find. Your mileage may vary, and your knowledge of Chrome OS may facilitate that that is different. Um, yeah so that's basically it just a quick short video i might try and bulk it out a little bit more who knows who knows who knows who knows who knows the basic principle is that yeah you can install chrome os on the x230 tablet it runs perfectly performs really well and uh, i got quite a kick out of doing it and i can recommend it so some cheeky bonus footage for anyone that i wasn't quite long enough for uh, all the games I tried to install on this just immediately close so far, all the traditional Android games so I'm trying now World of Tanks Blitz because I play this on PC anyway so in theory it should be a little bit more friendly and there we go, it crashed out so this demonstrates one of the issues I'm having I don't know for certain what that is whether it's a setting I could change whether it's a problem excuse me, with the Android emulation on the Chromebook. But I know that on Bluestacks, on this device, I've been able to um, play touch games and mobile games with it absolutely no problem. So it's not a problem with the hardware, it's a problem with how it's running the software on it. Another feature of Chrome OS that's quite handy is it runs Linux in a virtual machine. I've just quickly installed NeoFetch just for the lols. And as you can see, so it's using Debian it's just GNU Linux 10 Buster on Chrome OS. Uh, well, you can see what's written there. I don't need to read it all out. But it seems to work relatively well. I'm not quite sure what else to say. Um, but I just installed NeoFetch by just sudo apt install NeoFetch, and it worked perfectly. Um, I can't think of any more examples to set up just now, but it just shows you that 
you know, it is entirely feasible to use Linux on this, it, although it is a virtual machine. And one app for gaming that does work, which really surprised me, was Steam Link. Now, I'm not going to actually set it up and get it working because I, don't, I haven't got the ability to get my um, rig, which is, you know, I can't cover it up, I'll try and blur it, but my, I haven't got the ability to run my rig and the recording system. But in theory, it does actually work. And you can use touch controls. Or, or a PS4 controller works quite nicely or any controller that you can sync with your device via Bluetooth or whatever but yeah the Steam Link app does actually work so in theory on your Chromebook on your X230 or your, sorry your Chrome OS Chromebook on the X230 you can play using the Steam Link app and it works perfectly I have tested it so that's an option for gaming if at least while you're at home anyway so where this thing really shines for me is in this way. So you go to your little thing there, you click settings, and then you go to this little da, 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 device, display. Now I like having the battery on the right for, um, well basically you can, you can set it to auto rotate or whatever orientation you want it in. So I've got it set to 90 degrees here now. It's also got night light, which is actually quite pleasant. It's just it's a little red tint. Um, and yeah, I really like it in touch mode like this. It's just really enjoyable. Um, we'll do go to Reddit. Reddit has flipped itself around to another orientation, which is interesting. Uh -huh. So just so I look at a cheeky message, notification. No, that's fine. Um, yeah, so you can just use it like you would a normal Chromebook, basically. If it was a two-in-one or whatever it may be. Someone sold a 500 pound demon soul machine and bought an EGP with the profits. Excellent, this pleases me enormously. Think pads, think pads, think pads. But you get the idea, this is where it really shines. Like It's just basically functioning exactly the same as you would with a normal normal Chromebook. Um, and yeah, so you can swipe, swipe the app down, come on. Um, let's flip it back to the orientation that it's locked in. This is quite a bonus for me as well. I haven't logged in yet, but having your Audible just there, so you can just 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 the little Android apps that do work. Because obviously none of the games seem to be working for me whatsoever. But I really, 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 seriously enjoy the fact that you can install uh, a, the majority of Android apps to this device. Um, your performance may vary depending on what you're doing with it. But it makes me. Oh yeah, okay. Don't you worry about him. Um, yeah, it just it's enormously pleasing. So um, you know, even if you just do it as an experiment, and you can turn off it so it auto rotates as well, which is quite handy. And then you can swipe down to close your apps. Oh yeah, it's just oh glorious. Although the default rotation mode for it is this way, which doesn't really suit my doesn't really suit what I like. But that's fine. I just like having the battery there. And you can set the display to be in whatever orientation you like in the settings menu, which is just down here. Um, yeah, so I, I can genuinely recommend if you've got an X230 and you've got a spare hard drive or SSD, probably better with an SSD, probably better with a small capacity SSD. But yeah, it, it's quite a novel experiment. And um, yeah, it's just good. It's just good fun. Just because I've I wanted a Chromebook for ages, because uh, Lenovo have got the the Chromebook Duet and it just looks absolutely beautiful. And I was like, I'm not spending two hundred quid when I could just when I discovered this through my research into Chrome OS. Um, I was just like, yeah, try it out on the X230, see if it works. So I do hope that if you try this, uh, you enjoy it. I I can recommend it. Um, oh yeah, just show you this one thing here. Look. When you turn it off, this is glorious. Just check this out. Ah, good night. And it's off because it's such a small operating system that it just takes. I think they say it's. I think from the research, 200 megabytes on your hard drive. So like, it's just on in seconds, off in seconds. It's so lightweight and convenient. I actually want to just have a little bit of a waffle here while I'm doing this because. 
just to sort of summarise, I think that things like Chrome OS and Chromebooks and what have you, uh, combined with cloud gaming, cloud services, cloud rendering services, cloud ju just things in the cloud, is kind of the future for the most consumers of what's going to happen. It's cheap, you can do it subscription based, so you can opt out of a service if you no longer need it and you can run it on the most simple basic device. This is obviously a relatively decent device, but you can run it on Atom processors, you can run it on like four gigs of RAM on like a 32 gig EMC flash drive. And it, I think it's the future of where things are going. The alternate side of that is I think with smartphones and laptops and like, cause I think in a weird way, like dock, docking technology is old hat. It's an old, technology that people may revive in the future things like eGPUs especially via Thunderbolt 3 and the kind of uh, just plug and play aspect obviously drivers wise but once you've installed the drivers it's plug and play I think this is the future of technology is either you know a smart device that docks like the Samsung DeX or a laptop for example or a Chromebook that docks and then connects to your own home peripherals and then everything else, especially with the advent of 5G and the kind of the the sheer amount of bandwidth that's available, um, I sincerely believe that this is the way things are going, and I, and it's very fun to experiment with it. I've been Tech Dave. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.